Hey, it's a quick video for subscribers to my newsletter, Crypto is Easy. If you are not subscribed to Crypto is Easy, click the link in the description below, head on over. And if you like what you see, please go ahead and subscribe. You can also subscribe to this YouTube channel. I don't post that often, but when I do, you'll get the video as soon as everybody else does. So one of the things, so I just posted an update for premium subscribers about, um, it really addressed uh, the, the market situation at this moment. It was a market update about some of the things that I saw um, in terms of some of the, uh, the just, the, it, I mean, look, it, it was just uh, some perspective on the market situation right now in terms of Bitcoin and by extension, altcoins. What I wanted to address in this video, just really, really quickly. Um, the bottom line is, you know, I know I talk about the market cycle peak and market cycles in general. In this moment, you know, I, I know I, 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 I get it. I get a lot of emails along the lines of, hey, Mark, what's the best way to, to like, to, for, what's the best thing to do for the next one to three months to make as much money as I can over the next one to three months? Um, that's a valid question. The opportunity is certainly there. It is absolutely there. And if we really are on this super cycle where prices only go up and never go down ever again, we're going to be, we're going to have a million dollar Bitcoin in July if we just keep keep this pace, right? If we keep this pace and keep the parabola and keep going up, you know, and all the things that Michael Saylor and Willie Wu and everybody are talking about come true. The, the way they are, in the way that they are, that, that other people are getting the impression that they're talking about. You know, so many people think that this thing is gonna just gonna go on forever and that the old rules don't apply. And, you know, there are all these different models, you know, the four year cycle, I just learned about a hash cycle that I didn't know about uh, the having cycles and all these other things that people throw out there, stock to flow, these models and everything like that. And, you know, look, we'll see, we'll see which one of these things comes out in the wash. If you're, if you're a premium subscriber, you know, I look at the, the history of how people move Bitcoins around and what that means for the momentum and trajectory of the market. This is, so this is, this is not a data model. It's not a projection into the future. It's actually looking at the past, looking at very clear signals about when we get to extremes, to the extremes of the market. The extremes being the market cycle peaks, where afterwards we get these massive crashes. And when we have these great buying opportunities, when the, when there's a strong foundation for a long and sustained and continued upwards trajectory. And if you get those right, nothing else matters. Everything in between is just, I mean, look, I mean, I'm going to, I'll do the updates. So you, so you guys know what I see, what I look at, the perspective. Um, and then, and then hopefully that may helps you make a little more informed decision about what you plan to do. Uh, but everything in between when the price is in the buy zone and when we get to that market cycle peak is just like, there's a reason I say relax and enjoy the ride. That's an opportunity to enjoy this moment. If we really do get that outcome that everybody's talking about, super cycle, only, you know, everything goes up, only up, never down again, hyper-Bitcoinization and everything like that, you don't need to put a single, another penny into the market. You're going to be rich. Whatever you have now in Bitcoin, you're going to be rich. If you're holding altcoins, look, altcoins, we're in the middle of alt season. The only thing that stops alt season if, it, if Bitcoin continues to crash. If it keeps going down, there's no way we can sustain alt season. The moment Bitcoin turns around and regains momentum, which would mean it would have to go up at some, somewhere in the mid 50s, at least, uh, certainly above 57,000, and, and then, you know, keep going up, alts are going to just be, it's going to be like nothing you've ever seen. Like nothing you've ever seen. It will, it will blow your mind. It'll blow your mind. And we know that because we, we know we have the trends, we have the data, we see the patterns, we see what that's meant in the past and what that signal, and, and we, so we assume that because it's happened time and time and time again in the past, when you see all these things that you should expect it in the future, regardless of whatever Willie Wu says, regardless of what, um, you know, Michael Saylor is saying, institutions, this and that, everything, everything that people are saying, because at the end of the day, Bitcoin and all these cryptocurrencies, they are purely speculative. Well, I shouldn't say that. Bitcoin is not speculative. But the movements of, but Bitcoin does not have an applied purpose where there's any way to lock supply up, right? To keep it off of the market. 
there's there's nothing keeping that Bitcoin from coming onto the market at a moment's notice like that. In a moment's notice. And we see that. You see that throughout the 12 years of Bitcoin's history in the way people, in the way HODL wallets, right? wallets that HODL. Well, they hold it for years and then those Bitcoins come back on the market. And it doesn't matter how many, how much, that it doesn't matter that PayPal is buying from all the miners. It doesn't matter that Grayscale is buying from all, yeah, every Bitcoin that's brought onto the market because there are still, you know, they can buy all the Bitcoins they want. There are still 17 million Bitcoins that are sitting in the wallets of people who aren't miners, who aren't PayPal, who aren't institutions. And those can come into the market any minute on it like that. This is not like cobalt or where, you know, look, once you pull out cobalt out of the ground, once it's, you know, produced, once it goes into the manufacturing, you're not pulling cobalt back out and sending it to market. You need to go and find more cobalt. But with Bitcoin, you don't need to do that because it's sitting in, in wallets of people all over the world. There are also some specific data correlations and patterns that you've seen in the past they play out time and time again. They play out when the world is in a recession. They play out when the world is in a massive economic boom. They play out when they, they just, it's these, it's this, these cycles. And these cycles play out no matter what is going on in the wider world, currency wars with China, you know, whatever. And you can see these things. So when I say the market is fraught with risk, I know it seems crazy. It doesn't make any sense. Like, what are you talking about, Mark? Everybody's saying super cycle. You're, I, and I'm even saying, look, this is alt season. Alt season. Hey, you know, and, and, and look, premium subscribers know how I feel about, you know, right now about what I see in terms of the trajectory, what, what it looks like when you look at the past, um, what it, you know, what it looks like. The thing is, we are not at any of the extremes. And because we're not at those extremes, this is a very risky market. The decisions are very hard. They seem very easy because it feels good when you put money into something and you see the price go up. But what happens when the price stops going up? All I mean to say is that you can't, nobody can deny the opportunities there. Nobody can deny that big buyers, big institutional buyers are here. How much they're in, we don't know. We don't know. We, the data that I showed you in the last uh, update, that should give you a little moment's pause. Just appreciate, just to appreciate that there are things going on that are not being covered and not being reflected in the conversations that you're having and the things you see on Twitter and YouTube. And keep that in mind. Understand that the opportunities to, to grow your wealth in amazing ways with very little risk, they come all the time in this market, but they come when you're not expecting it and you're not, and it doesn't feel like it. And that's when those great opportunities come. And if you wait for those opportunities and if you have the patience to wait for those opportunities, this market becomes very easy. And times like these, you don't care because you're either way up or you know what direction you should expect the market to go. So you don't have to worry about any of these things. You don't have to chase after whatever's coming up. You don't have to worry about what are you gonna do with your money to get the most out of it in a few months or a month. How, how, can, you, how can you use cryptocurrency? Get yourself more money and instead, you can look at cryptocurrency and these digital assets as a way to build wealth and acquire your stake in these financial networks that are that are being born today. These financial networks that are going to grow and blossom, not all of them, but some of them, they're going to grow and blossom and expand. And the tokens that support those financial networks are going to be worth so much in the future. It will boggle your mind. You won't understand it. It will not make sense to you. It just, it, 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 the, it's, it's hard to like, when you put pen to paper and you make some honest, reasonable um, assumptions and, and, you know, I now have a, a, an awesome analyst who's helping me out with some of these altcoin recommendations and he's a quant guy and, you know, he puts these, these things to paper and he does the analysis and he runs the number 
and 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 he does the most conservative analysis, right? He assumes that he he errs on the side of 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 the downside with every calculation. This is not pie in the sky. This is not Tika saying, "Hey, we're going to go to 100. Hey, put in uh, $500, you're going to make a million dollars in a year." Um this is just sound analysis and the multiples are just insane. They're insane. So the opportunity is there. In the short run, the opportunity is there. We're in the middle of a raging bull market. Alt season is in full effect. I know it doesn't seem that way because the past three days, the price has gone down. But you know, the price is going to go down for three days, no matter whether you're in a bull market or bear market. And these things just happen. And maybe the price continues to go down. Maybe it goes up. These are the vagaries of the market. Just this is a normal volatility of the market. Um, the, the thing is, I don't, so you know, I just don't want to be perceived as saying that there's no opportunity, that you shouldn't be getting in, that you shouldn't be adding money, buying Bitcoin, altcoins, whatever it is. I don't know. That, that is not what I'm saying. What I am saying is understand the situation. Understand, have some perspective around the situation we're in. And everybody says this is a sure thing. It was a sure thing when everybody was saying it wasn't. Nine months in 2018, six months in 2019. Seven, almost seven months in 2020. It was an amazing opportunity. And there's a very good chance you didn't take advantage of that opportunity. Now is not an amazing opportunity. Now, look, it's the crypto casino and you can do very, very well. You can do in incredibly well. Like There's no denying that. As, but if you think this thing is going to just keep going straight up forever, if you think we're not going to have a massive crash, you're not looking at you, you, you're not looking at the data that I'm looking at, which is the data that shows how the market has moved when you saw people doing exactly what they're doing now with their Bitcoins. And the data I look at, it doesn't matter if you're an institution. It doesn't matter if you're an exchange. It doesn't matter if you're rich, poor. If it doesn't matter where you live, these are movements of Bitcoin around the network. It doesn't matter what the entity, the quote unquote entity is. And that data... That data does not support the idea that we are going to go up forever. That we are right now at this point, without a very serious pause uh, or crash, even it, it can either just be a pause sideways, we kind of chill for four months or so, or a crash where we just wipe people out and we go down 50% from here. Without something like that, this market, this this bull market, is going to end a lot sooner and a lot lower prices than than people think. Um, that doesn't mean we have to go into a five year bear market, three year bear market, we not even a one year bear market. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying we're going to reset the cycle. If we keep this trajectory, we're going to reset the cycle, and it's going to come, and it's going to take a lot of people by surprise. But we're going to hit a market cycle peak. We're going to have a pretty big crash. Not saying it has to be 80, 90%, but it's going to be really significant and it's going to kind of, it's going to be very healthy. It's going to flush out all the greed. It's going to flush out all these people who are like, you know, at the point where they're now borrowing money to buy Bitcoin. They're borrowing money to buy alts. They're leveraging themselves to the hilt. They think it's their last chance. They're like, I can't believe, oh, I need 6.15 Bitcoins now, today, and I'm not willing to wait for it. And we're going to just flush all those people out so that we can get that really strong foundation for just this massive, long sustained, even bigger bull run, even better bull run. Because if we get that, that's when the institutions are going to come in. That's when, in force, in mass, in massive amounts. And they're gonna pick up the bones from all the people who right now are getting in because they think, oh, Bitcoin's price is going up. It's gonna keep going up forever. So I'm gonna buy now and I'm not gonna wait. And I'm not going to wait for the opportunity. I'm not going to wait for those prime opportunities. I'm not going to wait. I'm not going to have the discipline to find these amazing investment opportunities so that when these times come, the times we're in and Bitcoin is, you know, has just been going parabolic so that you and I and everybody else, because we had that discipline, can look down on our portfolios and say, we don't need to take profits because if this thing crashes 80%, we're still up on our money. And at that point, the options and opportunities are 
Amazing. That's when you mortgage your house to buy Bitcoin. That's when you borrow, you leverage to buy Bitcoin, to buy all coins. When it goes down, when it's in the buying zone in my plan for Bitcoin's bull market, when it, when you have those massive crashes that flush everybody out, that's when you need to be very aggressive about getting in and, and, and buying. Because the other piece of data that people forget, the trend, the pattern that is unbroken for 12 years, going on, you know, next year, it'll be, it'll be 13 years. That pattern is incredibly powerful. And that pattern is the price goes up. And all the data and the metrics that support the behaviors and the patterns that have driven Bitcoin's price up that we know. We see that. We've seen that for 12 years. Those things all reset. When you have an asset that is virtually guaranteed to go up in value over time, you don't need to rush. You don't need to play catch up. You just need to wait for the market to come back to you. And in the meantime, yeah, you can make a lot of money. Buying and selling, cashing out, catching the wave, catching the wave up, sell, trading. If you're a good trader, you can do that too. If you wait for those great opportunities, everything becomes easy and you don't have to worry about any of this stuff. And then you can just sit back and enjoy this moment. And you can sit back and just enjoy the rest of your life knowing that you have your stake in the financial networks of the future, that you have secured your wealth with these digital assets that can't be corrupted. They, they can't be inflated away. They can't be destroyed. Or they may fall into disuse. But that's, at least with Bitcoin, that's very unlikely. Um, so, but, but you know that this is real property that you own. It is yours. It is your security, your financial security. And you can buy it now for pennies on the dollar for what it'll be in two, three, four, five years six years. That's what I think about every day. Every day I think about every day. I'm just so grateful that I had the chance to find out about this stuff. And I had the chance and the opportunity and I was in a position to be able to take advantage of that opportunity. And those opportunities, they will come again and again and again, time and time and time again. This is not an opportunity for that. This time is not an opportunity for that. It is an opportunity to make money. It isn't, I mean, and, and you know what? Look, in two years, three years, you're gonna look back, you're gonna say, $50,000 Bitcoin, I spent 18 minutes watching this video from this guy who went on and on about whatever. And uh, because you know, I was worried about a $50,000 Bitcoin, you'll be looking back at a $50,000 Bitcoin. Two years, three years, you'll be looking at a $50,000 $50, Bitcoin. You'll be looking back. And you're gonna look at it like today, we look at a $5,000 Bitcoin a $1,000 Bitcoin, simply because that's what you can expect in the future. But are you willing to wait two or three or four years for that? Or even another year? Because we go to a market cycle peak, have a big crash, we need to recover four months, six months, eight months, a year. It doesn't have to be a three-year bear market, but it's going to take some time to recover. It's going to be nasty. It's going to be hard. And it's going to challenge your, your discipline and your faith. And if you overextend yourself and you take unnecessary risks in this moment, when Tika is going on, on doing his, his webinar, hey, you're going, to make a, you're going to be a millionaire buying staking tokens because you know, it's just like getting a dividend. When you know you got um, those guys from Weiss and they're sending out this uh, marketing thing, like, oh, I got these three awesome altcoins that are going to make you a millionaire. When Willie Wu is posting whatever, when you know Michael Saylor is saying, hey, never sell your Bitcoin, just borrow off of it. You know, Bitcoin's at buy your Bitcoin at fifty thousand dollars and borrow, you know, however much you want, and you're going to be fine. Don't worry about anything. That's you know, because you know what the value of dollar always goes down and the value of Bitcoin always goes up. Those are great arguments when Bitcoin's in the buy zone of my plan. Those are great arguments when the Bitcoin's price is not likely to go down lower for longer and very likely to go up forever, literally forever. When altcoins are, are, going, are on sale for pennies on the dollar, 
that's when you that's that's when all those guys are true are that's when you buy into that hype which is the exact opposite of when they're given it because i can tell you as a content creator nobody cares when the price goes down when the price goes down and the opportunity comes and you have these massive opportunities nobody cares nobody wants to do that so of course they're not going to they're not going to pound the table to buy bitcoin when it's when it's when it's down they're not going to be holding you know seminars and sessions and sending you you know mailings they're not going to be saying charging $97 for a book on how to buy all coins that you can just that you know 10 minutes on Google would tell you the same thing as they're they're charging $97 for it's just the way it is and it, but like i said look if if you can wait for the opportunities this market becomes very very easy and in the meantime look you could do very well I'm never going to stop you from making money or making a better lifestyle for yourself. Um, and I don't want my comments to be construed as saying anything other than uh, just go for it. Go for it. Do your thing. It's just about the, the thing that I think is important is understanding, having some awareness around the, the market situation based on history, based on what we've seen before. The same way that, you know, when you look, when you, when you plan your, your, the way you, you go to work. Right. And you know, the, the, you know, if you know that the beltway is going to be all backed up, you know, you, 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 let's say you work 10 minutes away and you know, the beltway is going to be backed up. You take the back roads and you get there in a, in a, in a flash. And I'm the guy who's saying, Hey, look, just take the back roads. Everybody said, everybody else is saying, Oh no, 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 no. You got to take the highway. You, know, it's, you can go 60 miles an hour, 65 miles per hour. Think of how fast you can go. When the reality is, yeah, you can in the middle of the night. Well, I mean, look, I live in the DC metro area. So yeah, in the middle of the night, yeah, then you can go 60 miles per hour every other minute of the day. And <laughs> you're not going 60 miles an hour. And during rush hour, you're going 20 miles an hour. And it's just like, so I, I just want to present that awareness and that perspective. Um, based just looking at the facts, the data, the patterns, the history. And yeah, it could be different this time. Sure, of course. It could be different. It could absolutely be different. You, you never know. But I don't see any of that yet in any of the data that I look at. I don't see anything yet in any of the data that I look at. And when I reflect on my feelings back in November 2017, not December, not at the market cycle peak, but when I think about November 2017, it feels an awful lot like November 2017 when things were... you. So, And this is not... I'm not saying... I, I just, I'm just talking about my feelings, right? My gut, my, re my recollections of 2017, coming into somebody who was new, who didn't know, who didn't know any better and kind of, you know, thinking about uh, how that felt and how you might've felt or, and how you might be feeling now and remembering that everything seemed to make so much sense and there was a lot of enthusiasm, momentum. We hadn't gotten the um, you know, the guy from Ripple goes on Oprah or and maybe it was Ellen or whatever he did. We hadn't gotten the whole like, you know, um, everybody's getting rich, but you and you're not like we hadn't had that yet. That was very that was within weeks of when I got in the market, uh, you know, a few weeks after I got in and really got turned on. That's when you had the, you know, this this craziness. And this moment reminds me a lot of that where there's a lot of excitement a lot of excessive risk taking, needless risk taking. People are getting super amped. There are all sorts of narratives floating around that seem intuitively to be, oh yeah, that makes sense. And if you don't look at the facts and data and look at what actually is going on, you wouldn't even think to question it, right? I didn't. Uh, I didn't think to question it at all. I was like, oh yeah, that makes perfect sense. This feels a lot like November 2017 to me. So between the data that I've shown premium subscribers and um, the uh, just this is this is just me reflecting on my own personal experiences. So you know, take it with a grain of salt. Uh, just be careful out there, guys. Uh, there there are going to be some great opportunities. We've had great opportunities to build wealth and accumulate our stake in these networks. We will have those opportunities again. This moment right now. This is not one of those opportunities. And uh, so the question is, are we going to end, are we going to sell before we buy again? Are we going to go to the market cycle peak, sell, come back in after the after the dust settles and, and the smoke clears? 
Or are we going to have a really, really significant drop or a very sustained, long, sideways kind of, you know, just chill out? That, that's going to freak people out. Um, you know, are we going to have, and then, and that gives us an opportunity to buy in again when those metrics reset and we set that foundation that I'm talking about in terms of what you see in terms of how Bitcoin are moving around the network. That signal is that the opportunity is there. The market is settled. It's ready to go up. It's ready to go on another parabolic zoom. And if that's the case, then we buy and then we just, we just chill. We let it, we let the market do what it wants. We'll just have to see. Relax and enjoy the ride.